Today, we bring back the beard guy himself, Norm Farrar, who's going to give us tons of unique strategies on press releases, Google business profiles, and much more. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Serious Sellers Podcast by Helium 10. I am your host, Bradley Sutton, and this is the show that's a completely BS-free, unscripted, and unrehearsed organic conversation about serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the Amazon or Walmart world. We've got one of the most serious sellers out there, Norm Farrar, coming uh, to us from Canada. Norm, how's it going? Very cold. Very cold, I imagine. What What is the temperature over there? Uh, actually, today it's not too bad, but it was ranging between, this is Celsius, minus uh -huh. 30, minus 16. Minus 30, to, oh my yeah. goodness. So today's around minus 5, I think. Today is very cold here. You see I have my Serious Sellers podcast hoodie on. Uh, very cold for us here in, in California is is about 10 Celsius. It's about um, you know 50 degrees. That's like hoodie weather out here. But that, that's T-shirt weather for you guys uh, up there, right? Take the knife out of my back. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, here, we're not here to, to debate where's the better weather. I think everybody knows Southern California is, is really great. But um, well, I want to talk about a variety of topics today because sure. this is now like a, I believe you're one of the few who have who have been on here three times. You know, we have people on. You're trying to have them once a year. And so this is Norm's third time. And and if I recall correctly, uh, the first time we, we really went deep into Amazon Post, which was amazing. So I definitely want to follow up to see what's going on there. Uh, another time we talked about things like Google My Business and, um, and uh, you know, uh, press releases and things like that. Maybe follow up a little bit there. But then, first of all, I want to switch gears. You know, we just launched uh, Project W right. on YouTube, you know, which is, you know, for, for those who don't know, W stands for Walmart. You know, we had Project X, which is how to get your product started on Amazon. And what myself and 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 um and Tim Jordan had the idea is let's do something for Walmart. But this this one didn't involve me because I really don't sell in Walmart. So we, we had Carrie, our other evangelist here, um, you know, go with Tim Jordan and do a full series on like how to take your Amazon products and, and get them going on on Walmart. So if you guys are uh, have not seen that yet, just make sure to go to the Healing Ten YouTube channel. And, and then just start with episode one, start binge watching uh, those. There'll be great information. But, you know, I, I know in the last year, Norm, you've been doing a lot of experiments. You've been doing a lot of, of of testing, a lot in your community have on Walmart. So I thought we'd take the first few minutes here talking about what's working, what's not working on Walmart, some insights you can share, some strategies. Sure. So one of the things, and, you know, Carrie and, and Tim uh, probably covered this, but the first thing is you really want to make sure you set up your application properly. Uh, so many sellers, you know, try to uh, get onto Walmart and we hear complaints. We hear, oh, I can't get on. It's taking forever. They are getting much better at it. And this is if you're going through walmart.com and, and trying to uh, get on. But the way to do it is to do it through an app like Shopify or PayPal or Deliver and let uh, walk through the process there. But when you do that, uh, Tim and I did a, a video about the application process. There's a few trick questions there. You know, do you have a warehouse outside of the U.S.? We found that if some people say yes, um, that's a trip up question. You know, so uh, just say no. It's it's a little white lie, but in this, if you are selling in Canada or you know Mexico, but if you are, just just say no. Uh, they're looking for U.S. suppliers. Uh, the other thing is. Uh, the U.S. shop or the uh, Amazon shop. Uh, if you've got an Amazon storefront, they're looking for a very specific URL and it could trip you up. So just again, probably the best thing to do is just look for that application video that uh, that was put out and I'm sure is covered in detail uh, with Project W. Speaking of the international thing, I think one of the most common questions I see in like a Facebook group, and we have a, a, a Facebook group now for, for Walmart sellers. It's called uh, Helium 10 Winning with Walmart. But are sellers based out of the country, what are the requirements? Like, do they need to have a U.S.-based LLC, or, yeah. or what what do they need to have in order to sell on, on the Walmart America website? Okay, so I'm, I've just gone through this with one of our clients. Uh, so uh, this client is in Europe. Uh, one problem was he... Uh, it was foreign based. He got rejected the first time around. So what he did is he came over here and he started an LLC. However, when he got his EIN, 
he made a mistake. Uh, the EIN did not match his LLC address. So it got rejected again. Now, the beautiful part about Walmart is if you get rejected, there is an appeal process. And usually it's pretty simple, something that, you know, you just um, look through, you know, the video and it'll probably clear it up in two seconds. It's probably a box that you checked wrong. Mm -hmm. But uh, in this case, it was because Amazon, or Walmart checks. If the, if the don't match up, you're not going to get on. So they are still, and it's getting better, but they are still looking for proven brands that, uh, that have, that are on Amazon or on Shopify within uh, US, not even Canada, within the US. So okay. if you have a W9 form with an EIN, great. If you have a W8, then you're, you might have some issues. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Very common question out there because everybody's, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I wouldn't want to call it a bandwagon, but figuratively jumping on the bandwagon at Walmart and as well they should, because it's a great opportunity. And there's a lot of Amazon sellers who are not based in the USA. So, so, so they're curious how to um, uh, sign up. Now, what Project W is mainly about, and this was by design, what was the first no brainer aspect of selling on Walmart, which is if you're already selling on Amazon, you got your product uh, here in the country, you might as well switch over to not switch, but, 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 you know, put your listings on Walmart. You've got your inventory domestically already and, and, you know what's working, what's not working. You've got the Helium 10 tools uh, in order to look at what's the keywords, which is all, not always the same on Amazon versus Walmart, but it's a no-brainer, you know, to not have to start from square one to develop a product and then six months later you get it on, on Walmart. Now, that being said, it's not just uh, taking your products that are already successful on Amazon and moving it to Walmart. So, so let's talk a little bit about what we don't have yet in season one, at least, of Project W, which is some other scenarios where perhaps you, you you are an Amazon seller, but maybe you start a product that's only on Walmart um, or, or maybe you're from Shopify and you start a Walmart. Talk about some of the other personas uh, on who other than just existing successful Amazon sellers can be selling on Walmart. Well, Amazon, and this could be, uh, there could be uh, different options out there that that Walmart's looking for. But first of all, you've got to fit into what they're looking for. It's not like Amazon where everybody can just flock into it or you can open up a Shopify store. They are looking for more of a seasoned brand or a brand that can meet their standards or their requirements. Interesting fact that uh, the Walmart, um, the typical Walmart buyer is a, a middle to upper income uh, purchaser, which kind of surprised me. I, I was very surprised when I when I saw that. It's it's not low bottom discount. Uh, it's in that uh, middle to upper income category. Now, there is a major component here that a lot of Amazon people will get tripped up on and they won't know what hit them. And that's the same with Shopify. That's why I'm feeding it in here. If you are copying over your Shopify listing, if you're doing that with Walmart, if you're doing that with any other platform, you're not going to get as ranked as well as if you have unique content on there. We're doing this like today, we're writing 10 listings that are on Amazon that we're changing over to uh, to Walmart. And that's because, and you you have to look at what Walmart is looking for. It's a different platform. The title structure it has to fall in to the way that Walmart's looking for. They're not looking for long titles. They're looking for a very specific title. Mm -hmm. Their bullets are set up differently. Their attributes are different. So very similar to um, Amazon where you want to fill in, especially with a flat file, all the, 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 um, the fields. Same thing over here. Um, mm -hmm. So if you are bringing something over from Shopify, make sure it's different. Now, who... Uh, I would take a look. I I, I just purchased some uh, beard <laughs> beard oil. There. Why would you need that? I have <laughs> no idea. <laughs> it just arrived. It just came in. It doesn't sell on Amazon. So mm. this product would probably be an. Out, and I've talked to this company saying, "I love your beard oil. You gotta you know get on Amazon or Walmart." And they want to be a Shopify product, but this would probably be something that the uh, Walmart team would go out, look at, and probably say be a good fit. Yeah. You know, because it's got the branding. They're looking for a brand, right? They're looking for sure. somebody that looks like they can service, 
the Walmart consumer, very similar to Amazon, to give them a proper and great customer experience. Yeah, makes sense. Um, and you know, I've I've said this a million times. Like that's the one of my biggest goals of, of if I were to you know when I start on Walmart, and I have started selling at Walmart now, but uh, I don't I don't personally have this goal because I don't have the time to to see it through. But if you've got a a, a brand or a product that would make sense to be in a brick and mortar store, you know, like Walmart in the future. That's like, it's a great path, you know, crush on Amazon, show that you're a legit business. Walmart.com accepts you now start crushing it on Walmart.com. Guess what? Now, all of a sudden you have an advantage over somebody coming off the street, trying to pitch Walmart brick and mortar, the Walmart sales team there. Hey, bring, bring this product in. You can say, Hey, look, I'm crushing it on Walmart.com. The next step is like maybe have it be a fulfilled by Walmart where they might actually purchase it from you. And then the next step after that is getting it into Walmart stores. And, and I've gone through that process at other companies I worked at years, you know, way before I was uh, in, in Helium 10. And it's it's just mind boggling the amount of business you can do with just one SKU. You know, this one company I worked at, they were doing tens of millions of dollars because you get one SKU in each each store. You know, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of stores are, are, are buying, you know, cases uh every couple of weeks i mean you guys can do the math it's actually way more than you probably would do on amazon if you can get it uh into the stores and you're not having to pay for advertising a whole bunch of stuff so that's like another great uh another great path now you talked about how how walmart does want to see some kind of you know they, they don't want just somebody new off the street you know like amazon can you know i could just have never sold one thing online and then start a professional account and be approved in a couple of hours but is there any kind of threshold that, that you've seen in your, in your experience on like when I should feel comfortable to show my website or to show my, my, um, my Amazon account to Walmart to apply, you know, like obviously if it's a website, they can't really tell if it's sell, selling or not. So could I theoretically make a, a Shopify website and, and then just that looks professional and they would accept that or, or do they actually want to see some proof of, of sales? I think they're going to dig into it. I can't tell you for sure, but my gut is, and from what I understand, they do more research. They're going to go and check out your Shopify store. They might even check out your social media. They're looking at different micro brands. So, and again, a micro brand, you might be selling a hundred thousand dollars a month. You're not a brand, you're a micro brand. And so they're, they're looking at these quality micro brands, how you look to the public. You know, again, it comes back to the customer experience. So I don't know, but if I had a two and a half star average rating on Amazon or on Shopify, or I wouldn't be pitching, you know, um, if, if you've got good quality and they will check out, that's why they ask you um, on your application, what other marketplaces are you selling in? So they can go and investigate. So I would definitely um, make sure that my star ratings are great or my ratings are great, that there's proper high quality um, copy images. That's what they're looking for. Even if you don't have a ton uh, and they, they can easily find out and anybody can easily find out the traffic and the metrics for, you know, any Shopify store. But uh, I don't know if you have to have a ton of sales in my yeah. eyes. I, I think I could probably launch something. I could probably be out there for a few months have a you know quality, have a phone number, have an email or contact, have a refu refund policy, everything that you need for online sales so you don't look like a schlump. Um, so Walmart, guys, again, you know, if you're not selling on Walmart and you are selling on Amazon, you know, I'm not saying that every single person should be. I'm sure there's some 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 strange scenarios where you might not be. But if you're established on Amazon, you've got a successful product, there's very few reasons that you shouldn't be selling uh, on Walmart. Um, so, so be, be sure to check it out. And if you're not sure where to begin, like I said, go to project W, uh, on YouTube and, or, or if you're a helium 10 member, it's going to be in freedom ticket soon. You'll be able to, to get information on that. Now, um, you know, one thing that, that you've always you know talked about before that that's pretty unique that I would say 99% of people do not talk about it is, is press releases. And, yeah. and I'm just wondering, are you still involved in that? And if so, like what's working and not working or some, some recent examples you can give us on why you think people still should use press releases uh, for their Amazon products. Absolutely. So it, it's changed over the years. Uh, the type of press release that we were using in the past for the most part uh, was called a social media press release. These are press releases that go out to all the media outlets and they also go out to some bloggers and influencers but also to different, um, also through social sharing. So it's a 
fairly inexpensive press release. They run from $50 to about $150, maybe $300 at the very max. What we've done now is we've created uh, something that is a much higher level press release. So the press release is also linked to content. I'll give you an example. So let's go talk about bully sticks. So let's say that I, I, I write a blog article. The blog article has got to be really great content, 1,500 words or so. The, um, the blog article should have some images, paragraphs really short. Um, you might want to do, this is kind of cool, a YouTube video that kind of explains that blog article, just a short one, so you get the juice from that as well. You bet it into your blog article. And this might be five reasons why uh, five reasons why elderly dogs need bully sticks or the benefits of bully sticks, you know, something, some type of hook to get them to read it. And you also have the information that's this, all this information is going to be on your, um, on your blog. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or on your website. Now, once that's published, then you go to a distribution syndication uh, company and you blast it out. So now that one blog article, very similar to a press release, goes out to all these um, media companies. Now, this is where the magic happens. You go to a higher end press release and you don't have to buy 20. You know, you could buy one or two or one a week over the launch period. You pay between $500 and $1,500. It's expensive. But you buy that and you link it and you, you talk about the uh, natural organic bully sticks uh, have proven um, health benefits for elderly dogs. And now all of the information that you have about your website, your social media, um, you make it a newsworthy article, but the actual link links back to your blog article and then you blast it out. Now you've got the power of the press release. It's linked to your um, news article, or sorry, your blog article, and that YouTube video is in both. So it's just content, and that's all I'm doing. The other thing that's that's unique is just content in general. We're going out there, and we're becoming authorities. That's all I want to do. When I launch a product, I want to become the authority in that niche. It might be a bit of an uphill battle, like if you're doing supplements, but if you're doing plastic shoe stretchers and you've got the best one out there, you could be the authority. Well, how do you do that? Get the content out there. High quality, well-written, not, you know, half a penny a word quality. You don't have to do it every day, once a week, once a month. Just be consistent. Same thing with the press releases. Just keep them going. Keep them going out there. Or you could do small video clips. You know, just, just repurpose the content. Repurpose the content on all your social media platforms. So if you've got a press release, why not share it on Facebook or on Pinterest or on whatever? Um, I wouldn't, I, the video on Pinterest, I wouldn't do so much the press release, but you could. We've done that in the past. But all of your social media should have, should have access to those two um, blog and the blog and the press release. It, it, it works. It works, especially if you're tying it in to a niche, you're tying it back. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should have, I should have mentioned this, by the way, the, I'm getting old. You have to have the link back to either your Amazon product, right? And don't be playing around with it. Just a raw link, like second paragraph, but for more information, there's your link. Have it click back, go over to your store, go over to your Shopify store. If that's where you're selling, most people are going to have it go back to their product listing. Okay. Now, what have you been seeing as far as, you know, how, how is this helping around initial launch? Like, does it help at all with, with keyword ranking and things like that? You know, now that's on the minds of so many people because, you know, the, the traditional things that people would do, you know, search, find, buy and two-step URLs and things like that are, are no longer allowed to be used on Amazon. So, so can this help with that? Absolutely. Uh, so you don't forget, you've got keywords that are within the press release. Press release goes out to authority sites. Now there's, uh, you're not going to get a ton of traffic. That's not what it is, but guess what? There's going to be links going back to your product listing. So that's, that's one thing. And then when you're doing the, um, the content marketing, okay. Uh, 
this is going to confuse people. I don't want it to confuse people, but it's probably going to go to the next topic. Um, Google business profile is the hottest thing right now. If you don't have business profile, a business Google business profile, which used to be Google My Business. Now they've changed the name. If you are not doing it, you are missing out on a ton of free traffic, um, a ton of clickless searches. So do you know what I, have you ever heard of a clickless search? And most people haven't. So this is something that Google does. If I'm selling chef knives, and I have um, a content piece about a um, eight inch chef knife. And I put images within that content piece, okay, about eight inch chef knives. And in that piece, you're talking about how an eight inch uh, Damascus steel chef knife is great for cutting sushi. It's a great carving knife. It's a great, Google starts to pick up that there's other keywords in there and when you publish it from Google My Business or Google Business Profile, they're going, oh, it's relevant for those keywords. Without trying to rank for those keywords, if it's relevant enough, all of a sudden you're going to get some juice from that. And if you do it two or three times, now when people type on Google, carving knife, well, all of a sudden you're appearing. Uh, Damascus steel knife, now you're appearing. You never ranked for it. The beauty is, when you go and you have that content, not only is it found on your website or your Shopify site, you can put all your posts, 100% of your posts through Google My Business and they'll index. So now you're starting to see under Damascus, I showed you this before, Bradley, where I had two pages of uh, search terms and they were all for bully sticks. And mm -hmm. I owned 19 spots. I owned... 19 spots of Google because I was just hitting it with bloggers and influencers were writing for it. I had images up there. I had old press releases from 2016, but this is all through Google, my business. And it's, it's now for brands. You can create in Google, my business, an area that you have for category and products or services. You can add your products there and you could say like, okay, um, uh, uh, chef's, uh, chef knives, and you can have different chef knives. Those can not only go to your, um, your Shopify store, your Walmart store, and your Amazon store, when somebody types it in, it's automatically going to be posted where, it, you know, where you see the Google shopping. Well, guess what? They're there now. And it's free. It's absolutely free. Nobody is doing 3% of businesses were using Google My Business. I don't know what the percentage of brands are. I've been telling people about this forever. And especially now, since last year when they allowed brands to go onto Google My Business, I, I'm going to keep saying that, but it's Google Business Profile. They just changed okay. the bloody name. And it's so powerful. So, okay. Walk me through then, you know, I'm here listening to this podcast and, and I've got, you know, Manny's mysterious oddities as my brand, um, or my business. Maybe I have a business entity. Like what's the steps, you know, I have to have it connected to a Gmail account. And then what website do I go to, 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 to apply for this? Um, what's the process like? Can you just talk us through a little bit of that? It's so simple. So all you have to do is you can just type it in. A Google My Business or Google Business Profile. Either way, it will get you back to the page. It'll ask you to um, get started. You get started. So if, you, if you're working with um, Workspace, uh, you can easily get to it by, uh, you know, those little icons on the top right. Um, drop down and just click the little business icon. But if you don't have a Google Workspace, just go into Google or Chrome or whatever you're using. Type in that. It'll take you over. It'll say, start your profile and it'll walk you through it. It's going to ask you for your logo. It's going to ask you for the name of your company. And then once you log in, it's a little bit intimidating, but it shouldn't be. Just go through one by one. So it's going to ask you, well, first of all, it's going to ask you, you have to verify. Okay. Most people get tripped up there and they want to phone uh, Google to verify. That used to be the easiest way. Um, we found over COVID, 
it's easier to have the postcard sent to you. And so once it comes, it's going to give you a code and you have to punch it in and now you're good to go. So that could take 10 days. It could take a little bit longer than that. It might be quicker, but do it that way. Do not worry. If you're working out of your house, I'm working out of my house. You put your house, don't try to trick them because you'll just be rejected. So I'm working out of my house and this is why um, it's now for brands. I can click a button and say, don't show my address. Then you can get started. You put all your business information. It's going to ask you for a short description, long description. It's going to ask you to add your products and your service or products and categories. So you can take all of your photos of your different products and put it in there. You So let's say that you have um, a multi-purpose knife, Damascus knife, paring knife, whatever it is. You can add those four or five, but you can all, those are all going back to Amazon. Now, if you want, you can take those four or five and put them over to Shopify or over to Walmart. So it doesn't just say go over to Amazon, which is very unique. And this all becomes part of Google Images. So when somebody is searching Google Images and they want to buy something, guess what? Your product could show. Um, the next thing that you want to do with this, so you're, you're adding all of this, you want to add any videos that you have, any... Um, any photos. So you can add photos of, uh, let's say you've gone to a, a restaurant and the chef is using the, your products, or it might be some sort of, um, uh, you, the chef tagged you. So you can take the information, take the photo, uh, of course, all legit, and then just write metadata on the back end and rename the file. So now you're renaming the file, your keyword, you know, a nine or eight inch Damascus steel knife with metadata in the back, post it up to Google, Google my business. It indexes 100% right away. Like it's 100%. It gets indexed. Okay. So then you move on and you want, what about all your Facebook posts? You can add Facebook posts. You can actually have it. Um, you can go in, create posts, and have it go to Facebook or Twitter. I wouldn't recommend that. I'd recommend going over to Facebook or Twitter or TikTok or whatever and use, um, you're going to be asked to, where would you like this to be pointed? So it might be over to your Amazon store. It might be to your Shopify store. That's called an anchor URL. That's the most complicated thing you have to know about Google My Business. That anchor URL is where people are going to be pointed. Do you got a Shopify store? Do you have an Amazon store? When you create Facebook um, posts, all you want to do is, let's say you do, you you have a really great video. You throw it up there. You write the caption, and you have to make sure that your anchor URL is there. Anytime Google sees your anchor URL, it's associating it with your Google My Business profile. So now Google sees and promotes your Facebook posts and Facebook is out there on your timeline, you know, like when you promote or when you post that post. So it's kind of like a double whammy. And that's the same for TikTok, Instagram, anything that you're doing. So it, it is so powerful and everything that you post, the more that you post, the better it is. And I'll tell you another, this is just a little gold nugget. I bet you don't know this, but Google indexes your Gmail. Okay. It, Google's algorithm picks up your email. Now it's not going to publish it. It's not going to, but it's, if you have a Google workspace and you're publishing or you're sending out Google um, emails, okay. Google sees it. Now, your, they, your email address, or you're talking about the content of your emails? They see it. They huh. see your yeah. email. And the trick that we have that we've just found out is let's say that you have a unique event going on for your product or something's happening. You've got a 10% deal going on in Amazon. Put your anchor, put that, um, you, you, when you go to um, uh, Google My Business and you talk about posts, it's going to say, okay, what do you want to post? You'll put in your caption, you'll put in a picture. And if you don't want to send it to Facebook or Twitter, it'll give you a link. That link, put that into your Gmail. Huh. It's magic. 
put that into your Gmail and you can make it into um, like a bit.ly link or, uh, you know, any other type of uh, URL shortener. But you just have something there. Click here to see what's new with click here for a 10 percent promotion on and Google's picking that up. You're using a Google tool. Every element that you're using with Google, they're giving you rewards for. Okay. Even mm-hmm. like uh, we talked the last time about a car dealership. And so here's an update on that car dealership. They were spending $55,000 a month on SEO. Okay. So somebody was getting 55 grand for getting this company. I believe it was in Seattle. That was the first one. So the Google, by using Google Business Profile, their SEO came down over a period of a year to $1,000 a month, same amount. One of the benefits that they had for getting indexed was they were using Google Sheets and updating daily all the prices. And Google would come back, re-index, re-index, re-index. This has worked so effectively with all the tools that Google has, like Google Sheets, Google uh, Docs, all the tools. Now um, they have seven car dealerships and it's seven thousand dollars a month each one of those dealerships were paying fifty five thousand dollars a month each uh, these are the kind of things i like talking to you about because these the, these are the kind of things that we don't really hear about you know um people are using i like these uh you know under the radar strategies now just in general um what's been working for you guys as far as launch i'm assuming you've been using you know what you've been talking about so far you know be it press releases be it uh these google strategies but you know for, for a lot of your students out there or people in your community, what are you seeing since that terms of service change that's been working for people on, on getting to page one for, for, for their main keywords? Like, uh, is it just PPC or you guys have some other unique strategies? Is it a combination of all these things we've been talking about so far? Well, I think it's pre-launch. Pre-launch is the keyword, right? So we want to make sure that we can at least look like authority. If it's a one page website, if it's just building up and having 10 posts on some social media, it doesn't have to be on all social media. It could be just on one or two, but just getting something out there, getting that first press release out there, steering up the buzz. Now, if you do have, it's different that if you have that list or if you don't have that list, if you've already got that community built, that's one thing. If you don't and it's brand new and it's fresh, it's a lot tougher. So yes, you're correct. We would get that buzz going initially for the pre-launch. We would then go to uh, PP, uh, our PPC and get that set up. And then what we're doing is we're lowering the price. We're either putting up a, a very low digital coupon, lowering the price. Here's my trick there. Um, I use this with Dead Sea Mud. And um, uh, with, there's really on every listing, you've probably seen this, is there's really three pricing structures. You've got the low-level product cannibalization team that, you know, they just want to move volume. And this is a true um, case study I looked at. It was Dead Sea Mud. $6.95 uh, to $14.95, and it went from 8-ounce to 16-ounce. Ridiculous. You know, they were making pennies. So if you take a look at the second tier, it went from 30 to about fi- almost 50 bucks. And all right, what's the difference? Slight difference in quality of packaging. The bottles or the amount was still the same. It's the third tier pricing is where I like to be at, where it's, and this is with that Dead Sea Mud. It's Dead Sea Mud. It's nothing different than Dead Sea Mud. Okay, 70 bucks to $95. The $95 version was three and a half ounces, not 16 ounces. But the packaging, the imagery, the perceived value was, was that much higher. What I'll do is I'll come out with a high-end, high-quality product. I want to be at that tier. I want, like, if I can get the traffic coming over, so you have to do some research here, like, what is that top tier actually making? Let's say it, it, it's favorable. Then what I'll do is if I want to hit an $85 or $90 range, I'll remove, or not uh, remove, I'll discount it down to middle to high second tier. So people are going to come to that listing. They're going to go, wow, this is 
why isn't this up here? Or it'll see the slash through it. And wow, I'm getting, you know, a, a, a tier one, you know, the best tier. And I can do this middle tier. They'll buy that up left, right, and center. So, and I'll run that probably for weeks, if not a month, just to get traffic going. Also, we'll be driving traffic from either Facebook or TikTok or whatever. We're trying to get influence. Influencers is the secret right now. You know, getting a good group of influencers um, that love your product. And then, you know, Paul Barron talks about brand ambassadors, you know, building them up to be the brand ambassador. And he's the king of that. So that's what we try to try to end up doing. But during this whole time, our goal from day one is to build up a community. Amazon wants a community. There's no doubt they're, they're allowing us with posts and with um, your store and with live. They want you to build that community. Um, they are allowing you now. I don't know if you saw this. They, they posted that you have to have over a thousand um, followers to have the customer experience program. So right now, the people who have it have it, but they're making it a thousand people. From what my understanding is, you have to have a thousand followers for the general Amazon seller to go out there and use that. For, you have to be brand registered as well, but they want a community. How easy is it to go out there, hit that button and just say, hey, I've got a new soap scent out there. You know, it's blueberry or whatever it is. You know, now you're targeting not only your followers, but repeat customers all through Amazon. You know, and, and this is a whole different strategy if I can get people over on my Shopify site, you know, and you can do a funnel or you can just do a, a simple email over to people or SMS. There's all all kinds of new things, you know, not just Google, not just Shopify, things even on Amazon, man. Amazon seems to be putting the pedal to the metal with, with trying to, you know, launch new analytics that people can use and and new ways to contact customers. And I know this, there's, you know, now some things if you're doing post and, and so, uh, you know, maybe, maybe just the last, you know, few minutes of this episode, it's kind of like a rapid fire or 30 second tip session. Like what are some things that you think are, are some quick strategies that people can use either with the Amazon post or, or, or just anything else that we haven't talked about today? Um, because that, that's the beauty about having you on every time, I have you on here. You talk about stuff I had no idea even it existed. So, so no, no pressure. That you still have to come up with something new. This is your third time around, but I, I have faith in you. I know, I know you can do it. So, what are some some new things, some strategies, some quick hitting ones that that people should be using that you probably think that most people aren't doing right now? Okay, so you mean I have to make it up again for the third time? <laughs> <laughs> something new for the third time. Okay, yeah. all right. So, I still think that when you're doing, um, if you've got a new launch, or if you've got an existing launch and you want to spritz it up a bit, don't count out Amazon posts. So you need to get those posts up to three to five, but immediately get 10 posts out there while you're doing that. And I'll give you a great example. If I'm doing knives on my insert, going out to my knife, who is your audience? Who can your audience be that can read or tag you within uh, within your niche. So for example, with a knife, target chefs, give them a, a, a bloody knife and ask them for their best recipe and an image of them holding up the knife. Now you can use that not only for a lifestyle image, but you've got something that's unique. Just And you can use this on Facebook or anything. If you bring out a Monday recipe, from chefs around the world or chefs across America. And you can call it that, you know, chefs across America. Now, if I start seeing chefs across America, I know where you got it from. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, something that simple where you can get engagement. People want engagement. If you're, if you're just putting up crap, uh, you know, you're not going to get that engagement. Now, the other thing, so Sumner Hobart put this out. I watched his, uh, his video on posts. And it got me really going because I, I've, I've known this, but he put out 10 posts, a bunch of posts about a year ago. He went back and he checked out his engagement and how many people actually clicked. He was shocked that over that period of the year, how many people, how many clicks he had over to his summary page. So that's probably one of the things that, that I would do during the, the launch. 
one of the things I'm not doing at all anymore, uh, and I was doing, yeah, oh, uh, Xne, you know, Amazon. If you're listening, Xne, but I was doing some uh, some re- uh, rebates. That was, you know, a go to. Uh, not doing anything like that right now at all. I'm doing deep discounts. If you want to drive traffic, it's those deep discounts. You can either put it into your coupon stack, coupon stack. Uh, most of the time, and I think it's the majority of the time, I don't have the stats, people don't even use that coupon. If they're if you're giving a 50% coupon off or a 30% coupon off, they're not using it. People don't even don't even click it. They don't even see it. They're they're just they don't see focus. It. Yeah. Now the, the digital coupon they certainly see, you know, and and that that's different. That's I believe the stat was 66% of people will click on that. And so you it's still not costing you. Yeah, you're saving 33%. You know, 33% of the people are giving you full pop. So that's a, that's another thing that I like. And one of the things that uh, is a must, is an absolute must, and if you're not doing it right now, uh, it's too bad because you can save money and you can drive new traffic. And that is taking advantage of Amazon's referral program, which is going to save you some money. Take that money invest it into your uh, whatever ads that you're doing. It could even be in Google, which will come back and they'll love you because your Google business profile will be associated with your AdWords account. But um, you can you can use that, save some money and also build up. Okay, cool. Well, you, you've been giving us lots of tips and strategies here. So it's always great to have you. Norma, I'm sure you, you're leaving people hungry for more. So how can they find you on the interwebs out there if they want to, you know, see your content and, and these uh, these nuggets that you give out all the time? Well, uh, probably two ways. There is Lunch with Norm, uh, the podcast, and uh, that is, if you want to get a hold of me that way, is just n at lunchwithnorm.com. But uh, probably easier if they want to uh, check out Private Label Legion, it's just norm at privatelabellegion.com. Love it. Love it. Now you're going to be at Prosper uh, in, in, a, in a couple weeks. 100%. Awesome. All right, guys. Um, if you want to meet Norm in person, make sure to come to our Helium 10 social. It's going to be, I, I believe, in like the 13th or 14th um, to get more information on how to get a ticket there. Uh, so you can you can you can see how that beard oil is working on Norm's uh, famous <laughs> beard. Uh, go to h10.me forward slash Prosper 2022. H10.me forward slash Prosper 2022. It'd be great to meet you in person there and and, and for Norm to meet you uh, as well. And you can maybe also meet, you know, the Sugar Ray lead singer there, Mark McGrath, who will be performing live at that uh, party. So, uh, Norm, thanks so much for joining us. And and. Let's see. Let, let's see if you'll be the one of the first to ever make it to four appearances on the podcast. You know, sometime, sometime next year. So, thanks a lot for joining us, and we'll we'll see you in a couple weeks. In, in All Vegas. right. Thanks for having me. 